if we're going to have these conversations, we have to start having these conversations. Because if we're going to do the whole, like, we all black. If back in the day, they don't care if you was light or what did it do? You, we all be black. Okay. So if we, if we all black, if we're all, if we all black, then let's talk about it then. If we're all black, if we are all black, then we should all be able to have these conversations, right? Hmm? Mm hmm. Because I would like to grow as a collective. I would like to grow as a group. I would like to grow as a society. A black society, let me be clear. I would like to grow as a black society. And I, I don't think... I'm just going to start. I'm just going to start. I'm just going to start. I've been stalling and I'm just going to start. So I want to talk about, you guessed it, biracial YouTube. Um, And <laughs> the reason why I want to have this conversation like this, which is sitting down, no notes, straight off the top of the dome, is because I... I've been hearing things and like in the ether. I've been hearing things. I've been reading the comments. I have not been in the chat room, so I don't I don't do that. I'm not in the chat rooms. No shade to stick alley, but I'm not gonna partake. So there's something happening um that I'm actually glad is happening in the space of biracial YouTubers, particularly biracial vloggers even more particularly or specifically or whatever language you want to use there biracial youtubers who are engaged in upholding certain beauty standards which are the bbls which are the lip fillers which are the weaves and the wigs the tapins all of the things so if you're not familiar with the video i made some time ago i did make a video commenting um on the Brianna the Brianna Monique situation where I felt that a lot of people actually were expressing outrage for the wrong reasons um for the wrong wrong reasons and I'm I want to make it clear again here I do not think the outrage for Brianna's statements really should have been towards Brianna herself. It's a wider intro community issue that's happening when it comes to colorism, featureism, texturism, all of the isms which Brianna benefits from, plays into, right, plays up, is even so emboldened to say she is thankful for, um, right, but these issues are intra community. They're not something she woke up just feeling. She was raised by her black mother and her black stepfather to believe these things. So the buck doesn't stop with Brianna. It also doesn't begin with Brianna. And that's what my video was about initially. Um, and then I also responded to her apology. Okay. So um, I was subscribed to Brianna's channel. And I will subscribe to Brianna's channel. And we're speaking about Brianna. And we're going to spend time on Brianna. Because I am using her as a catalyst for a broader conversation. Okay? Stay with me. Thank you. So, I will subscribe to Brianna's channel. Because I was introduced to her by way of Aaliyah's face. Um, same way that Aaliyah has introduced me to Carol Monique. Has introduced me to um, a lot of YouTubers. Now... I didn't really start getting into Leah's face channel, honestly, until last year. I'm not gonna hold you. I don't really believe I watched her videos like that beforehand. Um, excuse me, I might have, you know, glanced and looked uh, for a while, but I know for a fact I did not subscribe to her channel until this year. And through subscribing to her channel, you know, I've been introduced to Tasha and all these really great creators. So. Um, I can admit that Brianna's blogs and her content never really captivated me. They were really holding me, but I subscribed, I watched, I tuned in when I saw she uploaded something because whatever, I like Aaliyah, I like Tasha, I like these other creators, so, you know, it'll get better. I'll, whatever, like, they're friends, I'll, I'll uh, partake in it. Um, but when she made those comments about her hair... I 
didn't have to have a reckoning with myself, right? I didn't have to have this kind of like, oh my God, I can't believe I've been like staying in this place so long. Um, like I, I wasn't really surprised to hear the comments coming from her. I was really more surprised at the community's response, black women's response, and more specifically the response of darker skinned black women. Women that Brianna Monique does not represent. And I said in my initial video that Brianna is not a representative. Brianna does not represent me. And although Brianna feels that she is a black woman and identifies as such, does not mean that she is a representative for all black women, nor does it mean that she understands the, the plight, the true plight of black womanhood to be unambiguously black. <laughs> like undoubtedly black there is no questioning as to what i am nobody looks at me and wonders what else i might be no they are quite sure that i am black okay um and so there's this thing happening now in the mixed youtube space in the biracial youtube space it's, it's more so amongst the women who the women who identify as black women in these spaces because let, let, let's be clear now every single woman who is and let's black and white let's be because i don't let's not be obtuse in my comments let's not sit here and be like this person who is 75 things feels this way about the issue i'm not talking about them i'm talking about the women who identify as black women <clears throat> women like Aaliyah's face women like kara omanique kyra omanique women like Brianna Monique. I'm talking about those women, women who are black and white, who are biracial and consider themselves and identify as black women. These women acknowledge that they are biracial. They acknowledge that they are half white, but they self identify as black women. Cool. I'm not here to police what anybody is, but what I've been noticing happening in this space is that some women, <clears throat> and I'm just using these three women as examples. I'm, they're not to be the end all be all, but these are three women whose content I engaged with, two of whom I still engage with their content, one who I do not, um, who are starting to really address the fact that, oh yes, they are biracial women and they are benefiting from these things such as texturism, futurism, um, <clears throat> colorism, and their surgeries. Um, and not only are they acknowledging it, but they are now taking it a step further and they are calling on us, the black women that, who they do not represent and never could represent, to also be paying attention to those things and ask themselves to address their own implicit bias which I love, which I love. Because in my initial video about Brianna, about the comments made about her hair, I was calling on black women, first of all, to have more grace with her because the problem is not her. And the problem really truly isn't even the comments that she makes. The problem is that her black mother taught her to believe those things. The problem is that her black stepfather taught her to believe those things. The problem is that black women who look like myself reinforce these ideas and then get mad when people who don't look like us are spewing them are we not saying it about ourselves i mean i'm not i never have i never will say it about myself but are we not saying this about ourselves as a group as a collective and this is not to blame and to say like well because we say it we should expect others to say it and we should be okay with it. No, we shouldn't be saying it either. No black woman that looks like me and has kinkier texture hair should really ever be referring to her hair as nappy. I mean, she shouldn't be okay with it. She shouldn't be okay with her with herself believing her hair is nappy. She shouldn't be okay with other people believing her hair is nappy. See, all those things that are derogatory to us, we should not be trying to embrace, nor should we be trying to reclaim. Cause it's not working when it's we're not winning it's not working it's not working right that's why you get somebody like a Brianna Monique who gets on the internet to hundreds of thousands of people 
and says what she said about being thankful that her hair was not nappy like her black mother's. That's how we get here. So Leah, Leah's face, had a really nice sit down video. <clears throat> um, she talked about a myriad of things, she talked about a myriad of things. But at, I'm pretty sure it was like a question and answer, chit chat, something, I don't know. But she talks about how, you know, she's aware of the fact that yes like some of her channel's success and growth although all of it does not have to do with the fact that she is light-skinned and has loose texture hair and got a bbl it doesn't it's not all of her success should not be attributed to that but she was able to acknowledge that absolutely some of her success on especially on youtube has to do with that right and then she goes even further, which I love. Some people didn't like it in the comments, but I liked it. Um, so we're gonna have these difficult conversations about race and identity and things like that. Then like, we need to be having the conversations then. Um, and she maybe calls out, is that the right? She brings attention to, there we go. There is the language. She brings attention to the fact that we all have these implicit biases, right? And we have to work very hard at unlearning them. We are programmed by seeing things on the television, in media, in advertising. There's a reason why on the biracial side of YouTube, most of their subscribers look like this. They don't, they're not biracial. They're not white even. They're black women, right? And Aaliyah's face is very much aware of that. She's very much aware of the fact that the bulk of her subscribers are young, undoubtedly black, unambiguously black women and girls. That's who is supporting her the most. Sure, she's got some mixed race people up in there. Sure, some white people and some Asian and some Latin. Sure, but like 75% of her subscriber count, 75% of her followers on every other platform are undoubtedly undeniably black black women that's just the fact of the matter and you know she says you know you gotta kind of ask yourself when you are searching in vlog weekly vlog daily vlog you know whatever best blowout whatever whatever the fuck you're looking at you gotta ask yourself what's the reason that you clicked on her video instead of the video of the person that looks like you What's the reason for that? And I appreciated her talking about that. Now, it's not like Jackiana hasn't been saying this for years, but y'all know how y'all act. Y'all don't want to listen until somebody light and brighter says the same thing. But anyway, I'm going to let y'all have it. I'm glad people are listening, though. So, you know, as someone who, who engages with this side of YouTube, who cannot relate beyond superficial interest, right? There's not much I can relate to uh, Aaliyah's face on, not much. Um, and I am able to say confidently, I watch her channel aspirationally. In the same way though that I watch Jackiana's content aspirationally. But the difference is I relate more to Jackiana, not only because she is just a dark skinned black woman, but because we have had similar and shared experiences. Yes, due to the way that we look. Um, Aaliyah's face and I don't, we don't have those experiences. We don't share those experiences. Um, and I think that a lot of women like Aaliyah's face who sit in these, sit in these, uh, what am I looking for? I don't know, but <laughs> positions. Who sit in these positions of power, because there it is power, and I don't know why we are so afraid to use that language. Like, I'm not sitting here and saying Leah's face has as much power as a president or something but she she does sit in a, in a place of influence so a place of, of power if someone has influence over things that you do say desire to have they have some power over you and your thoughts and behaviors that's 
come on stop please like she has power so i think that many of the women like Aaliyah's face um like cairo monique um who sit in these spaces are starting to realize that their audiences are no longer interested. And I'm not saying these women have been playing obtuse, but their audiences are not interested in them even seeming to play obtuse, right? Like Aaliyah, Aaliyah's face has been doing way more sit down. Now, Aaliyah's face is somebody who I've been subscribed to for a long time. Like now I've been a part of her channel for a long time. So I've seen the growth. So these sit down videos like not new to her, but I will say the content that she's now choosing to talk about in some of her sit down videos um, is more political in a very careful and calculated way. And I think it's necessary because at some point we're gonna have to address. <laughs> At some point, we're going to have to address biracial YouTube. And we're going to have to address the fact that it is black women who, and it's black women who look like myself. Come on now, y'all. It's black women who are, <coughs> excuse me, who are upholding, who are holding these women up to the pedestal and who are continuing with them and successful. When the women who look like ourselves, we are not giving any time of that. What is the reason for that? Aaliyah's face has boldly now asked us, what is the reason for that? She knows that most of her subscribers don't look anything like her. She knows that most of her subscribers cannot, like we can't relate to her. Not just because of where she is in life financially now and physically now, but like even before. Like there's nothing here for you to really relate to. Unless what you're relating to is wanting to look a certain way. And if that way is drastically different than yourself in tone, we have a much larger issue at hand, don't we? Um... And so, I've been trying to figure out what are we going to do to start to combat this, right? Because Aaliyah right now, and I, I don't, now here's the thing, I don't watch too many light-skinned YouTubers. Take that how you want to take it. Let it sound how you want it to sound. I don't care. I don't watch too many light-skinned YouTubers. I'm not light-skinned. And... Thankfully, I was brought up in a way where I never, like, wanted to be light-skinned. Um, <clears throat> my mother is significantly lighter than, sign significantly lighter than I am. People don't, when I was younger, people for sure didn't believe my mother was my mother. Not because I don't look much like her, but, like, literally due to our skin tone. Okay? All right. Um, and so... My mother does, did a very good job in making sure I understood that I'm beautiful. And that although, although I don't look like her in more ways than one, I am still to know that I'm beautiful. I just I look different than my mother. And the same way that my mother looks different th than her mother, right? But at least all, <laughs> along the color lines, they look the same. So I've always been very consciously aware of who I subscribe to and who I give a lot of my attention to on YouTube. I understand that even if I'm not actively like watching a certain YouTuber for a certain reason, subconsciously things can start to right, like build up in my psyche that I don't want there. So I always make a conscious choice, just like I don't I just don't watch a lot of light skin YouTubers and I just don't watch a lot of biracial YouTubers because I'm not biracial and I'm not light skinned. And I think media should be representative of yourself. I think the media you should spend the most time um indulging in, taking in, receiving should be media that is representative of yourself. <laughs> like if it's, you know, teaching you something different or whatever, cool. But in terms of my leisure entertainment, yes, I'm going to need those people to look like me. Very much so. 
but very much so. I don't want to start indulging in content that doesn't represent myself. So, like I said, take it how you take it. I don't watch my light-skinned YouTubers, and that's a choice that I make. Like, a very conscious choice that I make. And um, when I am looking for a new YouTuber to watch, right? Like, say I've watched all my fades, recent uploads for the past month or whatever. And I'm like, but I want some content. Um, when I go searching, when I'm like, daily vlog, whatever. Uh, <laughs> weekly vlog, whatever. I'm looking for new content. I will scroll and I will scroll and I will scroll until I see a dark skin girl. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I just don't care. Um, because, first of all, I already know that our videos are not getting pushed out to the forefront to begin with. Right? Right. So, it's my job, I feel like, to, yes, have to actively seek out that content. Because I know it exists, right? That's why sometimes people tell me, like, I can't find a dark skin YouTuber who does this, who does that, who does this. I'm like, are you looking for them, though? Like, because typing it in and going, like, to page two and then being like, oh, can't find it. Since you know we're past page two. Since you know we're past page ten. Now, yes, is it an issue that we're past page ten? It absolutely is an issue. But you know we're past page 10. So let's not like sit here and act like you cannot find. We exist. We exist. I have found black women on YouTube who are potters, who are ceramicists, who are construction worker. Like, stop it. Stop, 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 stop. There's a black woman on YouTube doing literally anything you can think of. I promise you. And if there's not, she'll be there tomorrow. You know, like... There's, there were always there, and especially those who were dark skin, you have to just go looking for it. So, I say all this to say I'm happy that in the space of biracial YouTube, namely in the space of biracial beauty YouTube, that conversations are beginning to be had about one, the space that they are taking up from Black women, um, and <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, that was, well, child, real life. Um, yes, I'm happy that the conversations are being had about the space that they are taking up the, from Black women. And I'm glad the conversations are being had about these biases and the fact that they are benefiting from them. Because I don't think, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think, like I'm trying to really recall, but... On my time on YouTube, just as a, a watcher, um, subscriber, of the few biracial YouTubers that I am subscribed to, I can't really recall any of them outside of Aaliyah, and this has only happened recently too, um, who have sat down to talk about the fact that they are benefiting from colorism, texturism, featureism beauty standards like that they are benefiting and even contributing to some harmful things right and that they they get that they understand that and now they are actively working on like pushing back against some of those things right and having those conversations and making sure that, people, that their audience also understands that they know that and they're not just going to try to feed into it and continue to make money from it Right? Because Aaliyah is always going to make money off of the fact that she's light-skinned, has a BBL, has a loose curl pattern, and is biracial. Not just light-skinned, but biracial. That's important here. We're in America. Poos. We're in America. Because, see, Aaliyah could just be a light-skinned black girl. She could be. But she's not. She's a black, white, light-skinned woman who is biracial, who self-identifies as a black woman. And I like to use language like that. I like to use all those words together to help people understand what's really happening. Hmm? Hmm. Okay. Because in the grand scheme of things, are women like Kyra Omanique, 
Brianna Monique, and Aaliyah's face, black women. If they say they are, they are. I can't tell them that they're not black, right? All that I can say is that it seems that <laughs> of the, these three women who I'm using, you know, sort of like as a basis for this conversation, and I'm going to continue this conversation. This is my first video about this. I have more thoughts. Um, but... You know, Brianna took a really pointed stance when people called her out for not understanding how she benefits from texturism. Which is why there was an issue when it came to her apology. Because her apology did not speak to her understanding that she was benefiting from texturism. And I think that's all people really wanted from her. Um, I didn't need I didn't I didn't need a video of her getting super emotional. And, I, and now I know in her apology video she got emotional. I'm not saying that was right or wrong. I'm just saying like in the history of YouTube, when people do like a I'm sorry video or they do like a I'm sorry segment of a video. They tend to get really emotional and upset and like really get self deprecating. Um, and I didn't need that from her. I didn't I don't think that's what we needed. Um, I don't think she needed that either from herself. I just think people wanted her to understand that she benefits from texturism and that she made a very text, she made a texturist comment. She made a comment that was rooted in anti-blackness and she needed to understand that although those conversations were had in her household growing up, those weren't okay conversations. We have to start holding ourselves accountable as black people, as black women, as a group and as a collective. We can't just keep getting mad every time somebody says something that hurts our feelings. Because poo, we hurt our own feelings. Her black mother taught her that. Because her black mother internalized anti-black rhetoric. And that's why I kept saying in my video, I am not calling Brianna anti-black. I'm not calling her a bully. I won't do it. That's Because she's not. Because she's so clearly not. She's so clearly not. What she is, is someone who's been taught to believe anti-black rhetoric and sentiments, right? She's been someone who's raised in that. So now in adulthood, that's coming out and she doesn't understand it. She doesn't, un she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand it. She's not, she's like, it will come out. She doesn't get it. She doesn't get it. She literally didn't understand that what she said was anti-black. Because you can say something anti-black, it doesn't make you anti-black. What you said is anti-black. Now you need to understand why what you said is anti-black. In the same way that you need to understand why what you said is texturous. And why you also need to understand you are benefiting from texturism. So you get to say things like that. And you still get to be coddled. And you still get to be praised by black women who look like me. For good oh, child. The amount of women I saw who looked like myself. With kinkier hair texture than mine, you guys can't really tell my hair texture because I keep my hair shaved um, and I have for years now. It's just the look I like. Mm, it's giving vogue. No, but it's just, it's, I don't like doing my hair. <laughs> um, and it's not because I don't like my hair or anything like that. That's not even, I love my hair. And I've gone through many a period of growing my hair out and having the big afro and pressing it and doing all the things. I'm just in a moment of my life now where I'm going to... I want to do a little Grace Jones thing, a little, you know, I want to do a little, a little whatever. Um, but no, like the amount of women who I saw who look like myself, who want, who gave Rihanna a pass because we say it about ourselves too, is like, and this is why we're not winning, like amongst our, each other. Like, this is why we're not having progressive conversations because we can't even, it, like, are we not understanding that just because we say it about ourselves doesn't make it okay? We shouldn't even be saying it about ourselves. Like, that's a, that is the problem. That, that's the problem. Us calling our own hair nappy is the issue. Like, <laughs> we have to stop doing, we have to stop doing it. We also have to stop clicking on the light skin girls thumbnail before the dark skin girl's thumbnail and don't tell me her thumbnail is better it's not 
your implicit bias thinks it's better. Your subconscious bias thinks it's better. It's not better. It's not better. It's not better. Like, it's not, it's not better. It's literally not better. It's literally not better. But you want to tell yourself it is because you don't want to sit here and address the fact that there's a deeper reason why you want to click on the light skin girls video before the dark skin girls video, before the person that looked just like you. You are looking for a everyday, soft glam makeup look. And you know you an NC40. Use Fenty's third to last darkest shade you gonna go and click on somebody like elite stop what can she teach you like yes fundamentals and technique sure but it's still ain't gonna look like that on you and you're still gonna get frustrated sister girl come come now you had to have known that <laughs> you were never going to achieve the same makeup look as she has. It doesn't work like that for you. Not that you can't, not that you cannot have a beautiful soft makeup, no makeup, makeup look, glam, something. I don't know. I don't do makeup. I'm so sorry. But, but you had to have known it, it was not going to look the same way. You can use the same products. In your correct shades and do the same look and it's still not look the same because you literally don't look like that so why did you click on her video hmm? don't tell me it's aspirational no it's colorist you have internalized colorism that you need to work through and we're not we're not work like we're not working through these things we're not really working through these things we we want to hold on to them and, and, and keep being traumatized. Like, the response to Brianna's comments, like, babes, I'm I'm not interested in continuing to be traumatized, like, at all. I'm not. Which is why I wasn't mad at the girl. Which is why I made a whole video about why y'all should not, y'all, y'all, y'all should not be mad at the girl. What are you mad at her for? Okay, because it's her mama who, that looks like us that taught her that. So that's where we begin. And then we go back and then we go back and then we go back to the root cause. And then we start to unlearn and we start to unpack. But that's not what we want to do. We want to be reactionary. We want to yell and scream and be mad about it. But then like stay subscribed to her channel and keep watching. And then wonder why she can't even recognize or understand or at least not publicly address that she recognizes and understands that she's benefiting from colorism and texturism hmm well all right anyway quick little chitty chitty chit chitty 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 bang chat chat but i really just want to sit down and talk about the things i'm noticing in the biracial youtuber space read black and white specifically uh in black beauty YouTuber space and the women. I don't know about the men. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not over there. I'm not watching that. Um, but I have more thoughts. I have more thoughts. I have more thoughts and I will be back with those thoughts. But yes, we need to start having, like if we're going to have these conversations, we have to start having these conversations. Because if we're going to do the whole like, we all black. If back in the day, they don't care if you was light or do, 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 you we all be black. Okay, so if we if we all black, if we're all if we all black, then let's talk about it. Then if we're all black, if we are all black, then we should all be able to have these conversations, right? Hmm. Mm hmm. Because I would like to grow as a collective. I would like to grow as a group. I would like to grow as a society. A black society, let me be clear. I would like to grow as a black society. And I, I don't think we are going to start doing that until we can talk about things like this. Hmm. But I really, 
I really like that from Aaliyah. I just want to just, you know, I really, I really like that from Aaliyah. I really, really appreciated the fact that she answered the question and was able to acknowledge, not because it, it, uh, it would have been so easy for her to be like, no, I don't think any of my success on YouTube or in general has anything to do with the fact that I'm light skinned and have loose hair and got a BBL. She could have said that and if that could have been her true baby and she could have lived it. But she decided to not be up to. <laughs> like, she decided to not be up to. She decided to not lie. And she decided to breathe the broom. And she said, yes. Although I will not sit here and say all of my success has to do. Because that would, that would be unfair. Right? She gets up. She vlogs. She films. She sets up. She makes the content. She entertains the girls. So we can't sit here and say... She's done nothing, right? No, she has to do the work, right? She has to do the work so the work gets done. But we can admit, and she can admit, that a lot of that success, though, absolutely has to do with the fact that she's light-skinned. And that not only that she's just light-skinned, but that she's biracial, and that she's black and white. And that she got the BBL, and that she has a loose texture curl pattern. Because, you know what, let's talk about, I'm an I'm ex, this is going to get long, but I'm going to come back to it. Julesy, Julesy's light skin girl, but she got kinky hair. Ooh, y'all don't like that. That's not in your aspirational imagery, is it now? Mm-hmm. Because let's talk about it. If Miss Aaliyah had kinkier texture hair, I'm not talking about no 3B, C, I'm talking about 4C, 4B. If she had kinkier textured hair we have a different conversation about miss Aaliyah, and she'd be having a different conversation about herself too because her treatment would have been different and that's what i'm talking about like these things are real texturism featurism colorism ism 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 ism, 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 ism. and yet uh -huh. these things are real and i really appreciate the fact that she was able to sit down and be like these things are real these things are very much real and they are benefiting her and they also affecting her. But come on y'all, you gotta be a, you gotta be a little <clears throat> you gotta check yourselves too, because the fact that Sister Girl was able to sit here and be like, but well, why do y'all click on my video before a video of someone else who is much more in line with how you look and what you're looking for, right? If you are looking for fashions to fit your body type. Would it make sense to, you know, watch a plus size woman try on clothes when you are a size two? You know, that don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense, right? That don't make no sense. So why are you doing it? There's something there that you have to address. So thank y'all for listening to this video. I'll be back on my thoughts. Um, there's conversations happening, though, that I really like and are making me super excited. So I hope that they get continued um, because we have to have these conversations as people. We do. All right. Um, love y'all. I have more thoughts and I'll be back. <laughs>